Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. Um, so, another few more episodes left to table, to table, why did I say table? To episode 300 and uh, doing my little marathon uh, recording session today. Uh, I'm only doing four wines, it's not like I'm doing all eight of them right now. But, um, so you may have, so you, you probably are seeing another video this week. Um, unless I decided to do double up the following week. But anyway, so we're in that little um, mode of I'm going to record eight videos in, in a couple days. And uh, we're going to get ready for episode 300. If you don't know about it, if you didn't see it from the last video, uh, if you want to, don't remember what it is, um, it's April. Hey, I didn't say February. It's April 28th. I think the 28th is why I keep thinking February. Uh, April 28th is a Monday night, 7 p.m. Central on Justin.tv. We'll be broadcasting live from Max's Wine Dive. If you want to be in the audience, uh, click the Eventbrite um, link below and uh, or you know follow that link and uh, register for your ticket. It's free to register, but you will pay $20 at Max's. They're handling all the money. I'm not paying for anything. I'm not, you know, you're not giving me any money. I get nothing out of this. Uh, if you want to send me money, you can hit the PayPal donation. You can send me some money. But Max's is getting all the money. Um, I'm not getting any type of fee or anything like that. So you're going to pay them directly. It's 20 bucks. You get three half glasses of wine uh, for tasting. We're going to be tasting three wines I've never had before at Max's. Hopefully, you've never had anywhere else either. Um, and uh, uh, just be part of a celebration for 300 episodes. It's over 11 years, 11 and a half years of television. And I'll just... You know what? Gary did a thousand episodes. Naked Wine Show did like eleven hundred, and then um, I always feel bad and can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head. Um, but he's done like fifteen hundred episodes, man. And then there's me. As far as I know, there's there's no way between me and all three of them. Um, and, and and the two of them, Gary and Naked Wine Show, don't don't ex they don't record anything. Um, and I always feel bad. You know, I'm going to look him up before I do the next show so I can give him all the props. Um, it's just one of those things like with Twitter names, I sometimes don't catch Twitter names correctly or I remember the Twitter name, not the real name. Anyway, <clears throat> but um, you know, he's got 1,500 episodes and, uh, you know, it's pretty freaking awesome. But um, then, 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 then me. And then there's, I'm not saying we're, no, we're the only two that make videos. We're not uh, currently. But as far as the amount of stuff that we have put out, the content, um, there everybody else is still relatively new. I think there's somebody with around 100 videos that's still producing stuff. Um, and then you've got a lot of people that produce a couple of videos and they go, oh, this is actually hard. It's like a blog post, you know? If you do a written blog, you, you, you go gung-ho for a little bit, and then all of a sudden you realize, man, I gotta produce content. I gotta do it every week or every two weeks or even monthly, and then they give up on it. Um, anyway, so be there April 28th, either in person or online. If you're going to be in person, you got to be there at 630 before 7 because we start broadcasting at 7. We start to tasting at 7. So let's go. All right. So what is the next wine we're going to do here um, before I run out of time? This is um, the Stivali Sangiovese uh, from uh, Italy, and I believe it's from Emilia Romagna. Um, let's Scroll down to my notes here on it. Um, yes, Emilia Romagna uh, in Italy. So uh, it's, still, it's a Sangiovese, but it's not from Tuscany. All right. And um, it's the Rubicone IGT. I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't look at the back of the bottle to see that. Um, so I don't know where that, I mean, I know it's Emilia Romagna, but I'm not familiar with that IGT. Um, now, funny little story about this. Now, this is uh, imported by 
um, Ceci Wine, and uh, that's here. Uh, this gentleman is here in San Antonio, and he imports wines. Um, I've met him a couple times, and I didn't realize this till today when I was researching the wine, because I went to look it up, and oh, sorry, bought this at uh, HEB. And it's regularly $9.98. And with my discount that I got for buying six bottles, I got paid $8.98, $8.98 for it. This is the 2012 vintage. All right, so um, I've, met, uh, I've met him a couple times. And um, uh, I didn't realize it uh, until I started doing the research. So I shot him an email real quick. Uh, he should have had it fixed by now. But when I was researching the wine, there was, there was uh, some incorrect information on this particular wine I let him know about it via email so um, I'm real hopeful I'm gonna like the wine because you know I kind of at least have met the person that brings it in here so I hope I don't dislike it but it's the San Giovese I mean how am I not gonna like it come on I right, Stivali what's behind the name don't know other than it means boots in Italian um, What else is there really to talk about? It's, it's a Sangiovese from Italy. All right, so let's get right into it. See, I didn't pour like a whole bunch this time. Uh, pretty decent. Um, I'm going to look at an email real quick while we're... There we go. All right. So, uh, Tom... First name, Tom Sessi. Uh, he had sent me an email saying he was getting, he got cherries on it, which you should get cherry on San Giovese, just or Chianti. You should get cherry on it. I can see that. Um, it's really light color, but I don't have a lot of wine in there. That's probably the reason why I do put that much wine in there because if it's this much, it can be kind of thin anyway. So I'm looking for the color. But it does seem pretty thin. Now it does kind of have not the not the classic accordion case. Um, sorry, a little spit there. Not the classic accordion case um, aroma that I will get from Italian wines. Um, and, and if you don't know what accordion case is, we'll rewind. My father plays accordion. He has old. Hello. Uh, he has, you know. You just play, you know, played accordion when I was growing up. The case, you know, was leather and felt and dusty. And, and so it's all those, all those smells combined. Okay. And when you taste the wines, a lot of wine, a lot of Italian wines have that exact quality to me. You, you may call it something else. You may just call it dust or earthy. But I get that. Almost a little like, almost sour cherry. A little tartness, and it, I get more not to say the accordion case or the dust, but like a little bit of wood, like a wood paneling, you know, like older wood, not like finished and, and varnished, but like you know, like it's exposed wood in, in a house. And trust me, it's very faint, it's very subtle. I'm really trying to pull out whatever I can. It's not like an explosion of, of aromas in my in my nose. It's just kind of. You know, stream of consciousness is wood and what kind of wood. Really don't get any floral. I don't get any obvious uh, oak influence. But I do like it. I mean, it's it's a very it's a very light nose. It's not it's not uh, uh, very powerful, but I do like it. So, one of the first things that hits me on the palate is, is how light it is. Um, and Chianti's can be light. I know it's not a Chianti. Um, but San Giovese wines can be light. They also can be a little more full-bodied. This is definitely a lighter version. Um, I really do kind of get that cherry. It's kind of a tartness to it. It's not, you know, not like a very, very sweet cherry. Um, I'd almost say like a black cherry to it. And 
The wood is still there. It's not really that big accordion case type of thing, the, the dust and all that. Um, you know, acid is is pretty decent. Uh, I'm gonna say I call it a medium plus. Light on the tannins, it's not very heavily tannic. I mean, I would say it's medium minus to pretty low on the tannins. You know, it's, this is definitely something that I need food with this. I couldn't drink this on its own. Um, you know, it's a $10 bottle of wine. It's pretty decent. Um, I, I, I like it. And it's also something a little different. It's a Sangiovese, but not from the traditional area of Italy. So that's kind of intriguing. Uh, so it's a different kind of style. So you can't sit there and go, oh, this is a Tuscan wine. It's not, it's not, it's not gonna be necessarily in that style of Tuscan wines. Um, it's pretty decent. Uh, it's 10 bucks. Uh, I think it's, it's worth the $10. Um, you know, I can see buying this again and, and putting it with, you know, putting it with some a lighter, lighter meats, like really like an antipasto, um, that would be phenomenal with this. A little bit of salami and some cheeses and some olives and that type of stuff. Yeah, you know, I never really thought about olive pairing, and I'm not a green olive fan, but I love black olives. And I don't get any olives out of this, but I can see you having some olive with this. I don't really think about it, so I just kind of think, of, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, like like that type of stuff with, with like Italian dressing, you know, all that. I mean, I think this would be a really good wine to have with an antipasto because it's, it's pretty light and... Um, uh, it would go well with that pepperoni and salami and all that. I, I could definitely, definitely see this as a pizza wine. Um, I mean, if you get, you know, your classic, your classic pizza, uh, and I, I mean more of like a, a Neapolitan style or New York or say New York style pizza, Neapolitan style pizza, not a Chicago deep dish because I think those 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 pizzas are are pretty powerful. Um, they, I love them, but they're not my preference for pizzas. I mean, I haven't had one in a long time, so I'm kind of like, man, I kind of want one now. But, uh, yeah, I like this. Yeah, really, I really want some food with this, like pizza, um, antipasto. You could, have, you could have it with pasta in, in a red sauce, something that was pretty light. Nothing too too heavy. Um, um, it is it is it is it is light, and on the finish, I get a little bit of wateriness to it. Um, so, like I said, you don't want anything heavy on the food to overpower the wine, and that that's really where you want to do. It. But I really think the food and the wine will enhance each other, and the wine will taste better um, with the food. And uh, I, I now I want to try some of the other Stavalis uh, that they, that he brings in, and um, I hadn't looked at his portfolio in a long time, so I've, he's got some other stuff. So um, let's see if I can find that and maybe do some reviews on that. Maybe some of the same Savales from from the other uh, the other wines, or maybe some of the other wines he has. Um, but yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, I want to thank you for stopping by. Um, again, stay tuned for episode 300 on April 28th, 2014, in case you're watching this in 2015. Um, Excuse me. And uh, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below about the wine, about the event. Hit the donate button. Throw me a couple ducats. And um, yeah, we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>